Perfect. Take it away, James. The national championship is coming back to Tallahassee. But you know what? It's more like the Seminole City this week. From the bright lights of Doe Campbell Stadium to the bright lights of Broadway. Two Seminoles as expected picking Florida State. We are less than an hour away from ringing in the new year. Actually hey, caught up with some Seminole fans around here. Go Got go some go Minnesota go Gopher fans here apparently. Seminole Nation has clearly invaded the West Coast as you can see here. Keep it up guys. Let's and by the way, guys, after that, I, I'm, I have plans to go to Hawaii, Aruba, the Bahamas. All on WCTV's expenses. <laughs> the starting lineup starts now. Joining us in studio is former Heisman Trophy winner Desmond Howard. I know your <laughs> playing days are over, but if you stepped on the field today, do you think you'd still take one back? I tell people all the time, I can take one back. I just can't practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Each morning at 6.45, this is where Maurice Freeman grieves. His way of moving on. The site where three of his Brooks County players died one month before the high school football season. I really try to take them in as my sons. We try to teach them life lessons and and we lost them. So, you know, um, I just, I don't know how I'm gonna get over this. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever get over this. A single car accident took the lives of seniors Jakari Watkins and Sean Waters and junior Johnny Parker. Watkins' SUV slammed into a tree. Police cite driver error and speeding as the cause. I can remember talking to Sean. I mean, we're just having a few laughs, dancing a little bit in the weight room. And I remember breaking it down out of the hub. And um, we went our separate ways. And before I came down the street, I can just remember the car being right around the tree. And I can remember calling his name and there was no answer. We seen the truck stuck up in the tree, and we're like, we're like, we just, we everybody hopped out of the car and tried to go get him. And it was just, it was just a bad day. Water's brother, Devron Whitfield, was also involved in the crash. He survived. You know what I think every time I walk by the tree, I see that truck wrapped around that tree. Freeman, the head coach of the Trojans, kept their jerseys, reminding the team they have more to play for. I really want them for us back. I really don't think it's fair. When we first started, it was hard. We couldn't get ourselves motivated. We, we couldn't get ourselves going. But right now, it's like we're dedicating every day, every rep to them. The mood at practice has changed. Tears now tackled by sweat and ambition. The Trojans searching for three starting linebackers. Right now, we just got to get past the football game. Um, because that's, that's where it all started. It started at football practice. Whitfield has returned to the Trojans. He declined to comment for this story. But Freeman says Whitfield will wear his brother's number 32 this season, one of three numbers the boys see often when they pass the site, now a place of solace to speak to their friends. Sometimes I throw my 3-2 um, or I throw my 4 just to represent them, let them know that we still here and we're going to do our thing for them. The Trojans know they'll be playing with them. Jason Kahn, WCTV Eyewitness Sports. Devin Booker's final shot in regulation may be remembered for extending this game into overtime, but it was the very last shot of this NIT semifinal from Ian Miller that ended his career, as well as two other Seminoles, in the 67-64 to loss to Minnesota. What has this meant for you just to be a Florida State Seminole all these four years here? Uh... A lot. Ian Miller holds back his tears. The finality of his career after this shot immediately sets in. It's been ups and downs, more ups and downs, but, you know, we've had fun. Miller and his four-year teammate, Okara White, both finish with 16 points. They played a combined 75 minutes in their final game. Tonight was very emotional for me. Um, my last game ever uh, in college. You know, um, just just seniors, period. You know, Ian was very emotional, and Gilchrist was also. So it was a very emotional night. And a couple of seniors on our team that uh, that had been around. We won the championship. Uh, been a couple of NCAA Sweet 16. Been to an NCAA tournament. Uh, and and I, I was proud of the leadership that they gave us. The Seminoles finished the season with a 22 and 14 record. But before they left the locker room, Miller told the underclassmen. Next year, let it be known that you all are winners and continue to do big things. At Madison Square Garden, I'm Jason Kahn, WCTV Eyewitness Sports.
Welcome to Sports Extra, everyone. I'm Jason Kahn. Florida State facing their one and only FCS team this season in Bethune Cookman from the MEAC. Bethune is 3 0. A win against Florida International from the FBS last week. A win for the Seminoles today marks a couple of noteworthy milestones. It would give Jimbo Fisher the highest winning percentage in ACC history, and it would be the program's 500th win. Bunch of theatrics before the game tonight. Parachuters landing on Bobby Bowden Field. Chief Osceola planting the spear with Renegade, and I think that's enough to scare a team away. Early first quarter, Quentin Williams running out of the pocket, then looking to pass. He does, but to the wrong guy, or I guess the right guy in our case, right? Valdosta's Telvin Smith, a 68-yard return. Get up if you're in the Azalea City or if you're in Doak Campbell Stadium. FAMU head football coach Earl Holmes brought his team into Ohio Stadium on Friday right after they landed. He said he wanted to get those oohs and ahs out of their system before game time. The Rattlers playing in front of about 103,000 people. That'll make you ooh and ah. Ohio State is 3-0, and oh, ranked fourth in the country, averaging 44 points per game. Out of the shotgun. Guys, hands it off. Ohio State's first drive, Jordan Hall, one of two touchdowns for him. Buckeyes up seven. Kenny Guyton, Ohio State's backup quarterback, making his third straight start. Jeff Hireman in, two-point conversion, no good, 13-0. Valdosta State opens conference play tonight against Shorter, a program in its second year at the Division II level. The Hawks have lost both of their games this year. The Blazers are coming off a of bye week. That's a two-week layoff since their season-opening win on September 7th. Gabby alum Willie Downs leads the Blazers in receiving, was a top recruit in 2009 in the country. The junior's first year with the team here. First quarter, that's Caden Cochran hooking up with Downs, number 13, at three catches for 34 yards. In the second quarter, Cochran looking for someone to throw to. Why not Shontavious Jones? Jones also had three catches for 34 yards, 7-0 VSU. The VSU defense showing no rust from that two-week layoff. On the botch snap, Jeremy Grable recovers and makes a big return. Defense shuts out shorter in the first half. Austin Scott had a big game for Valdosta State. 125 yards for the night. He goes up the middle there for the score. VSU dominates 41-0. Cochran finishes with 177 yards and throws three touchdowns. Mentioned Austin Scott earlier. He had a game high 125. And Reggie Lewis led the receivers today with 91 yards and a score. Don't go away. We've got more Florida State football to talk about, and we'll hear from the Knowles. Plus, Lincoln alum Reggie Davis breaks a Georgia school record. That's next on Sports Extra. Okay, I mean, I got you now. I got you now. Okay. Oh. A few years ago, Trevor McDade thought this was the last place he'd be. I got you. I got you. At Tallahassee Community College, playing basketball. People that really know me and really knew how I act. I'd either be in jail or, or dead. McDade grew up in Texas with his dad and older brother. Often, he couldn't avoid trouble. In high school, he moved to Maryland to live with his mom. But sometimes, the streets became his home. When you don't have stuff, you look for, you look for it in different places. And I, I went down all the wrong roads trying to look for it. It's a park I, I used to sleep at. And like, I, I used to wear the same thing to school. Sometimes. I got AJ, I got AJ, I got AJ. It didn't affect his performance on the court. He earned a scholarship to Bowie State, but his grades and bad attitude didn't cut it. I had to find a different way out, so I told the Marine Corps. And I really needed discipline, so I needed the Marine Corps. I didn't want any other branches. Then 18 years old, McDade earned the rank Lance Corporal, and he joined another team, the Fort Meade Patriots. It was never, oh yeah, I see myself going to the NBA. Oh yeah, I see myself going to school for basketball. I scored 52 points in this one game, and then they were like, yeah, you need to go to school. You need to do something else better with your life. TCC head coach Eddie Barnes called a 21-year-old after receiving tips from friends. He was very honest with who he was. You know, he, he didn't hold any punches back. He is really tough. I mean, um, I've watched him against bigger kids, and uh, I mean, he gets knocked down, he comes right back at you. Let me through, let me through. His basketball skill was evident, but there were concerns about adapting to yet another new environment. You got to manage time here. You didn't have to do that in the military because 
They told you what to do, where you had to be, where you had to go. It's not like that here. Through all the things that Trevor's been through, it came down to trust. And uh, I think we've earned his trust. And I think that's one reason why he's at TCC. McDade is still a Marine, now in the reserves. At any moment, he can be called to duty. We all we got. Let's go, fellas. But his duty now is to lay up every ounce of his basketball ability for the Eagles. I want to be like, yeah, I did everything I could to get where I am. Therefore, whatever happens, I'm going to be good. You know, so that's what, that's what I want. That's what I expect. So that's what I'm shooting for.